What's up, Kingdom family? Dr. G is in the building. Welcome back to the Keys to the Kingdom, where we drop all the keys to the kingdom. Shout out to my faithful family. Y'all always in the building. Listen, baby. Okay, and we welcome our new members to the royal family. Make sure you comment. Let us know where you're tuning in from so we can welcome you. Okay, thank you for being here with us. Super grateful to have you on the journey, okay? As we journey to Jesus. This is the Keys to the Kingdom because we're always dropping the keys to your freedom, all right? And so I pray that this message frees so many of the Lord's children <laughs> today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, so I was having a conversation and of course God is always ministering to my spirit uh, through the interactions that I have, right? Through the connections that I make with other people. And so anyway, I was conversing with someone and she was telling me that her emotions her feelings they they make her make poor decisions all right and ladies what you have to understand is that you have so much power and influence over a man and kings what you need to understand is that it is so imperative for you to maintain your role as a leader and as a king. If you're not in that position already, it's so imperative that you get into it, okay? That you seek the father, that you learn how to be the man, how to be the leader, how to be the head of your household, how to guide a woman, how to guide your family, lead your children and, and things of that sort, okay? Because what she was telling me the woman that I was conversing with was that her feelings, she uh, stepped out of God's will based on her feelings. She um, provoked something to happen based on her feelings, right? And so as she's speaking, what it made me think to, back to, and this is what God was ministering my spirit, was the story about Jacob and Rachel. And so when you hear people speak about these stories, they normally speak about it from this place of glory and love. And, <laughs> and y'all know, I'm called to the body of relationships in okay the body of christ hallelujah i am here as the chain breaker as the curse breaker i'm breaking all the cycles of dysfunction and toxicity i am a faith-based counselor and i use my healing teaching prophetic gifts mostly to get us back on track to a healthy prosperous relationship okay with ourselves with god and with other people all right and so he ministers to me through relationships through love through the stories in the bible all right and so what he was telling me was really read genesis right he's like Brittany, go read this so y'all can read it my loves go to genesis um start at 30 no start at 29 i'm not gonna read it but start at 29 what you need to know is that anytime i hear people speak about jacob they're like oh he loved rachel so much that he worked seven years for her okay that's true but understand this when you really read this these scriptures Jacob first had to, he thought he was deceived. He thought he was going to be able to just marry Rachel, but the firstborn had to be honored. And so the father gave the firstborn over uh, to Jacob, which was Leah. He didn't want to marry her, but he had to marry Leah. He married her. And then after seven days, he was able to receive Rachel and he loved Rachel more, but Leah felt that disconnect. He, she felt that Jacob loved Rachel more. And so Leah was like, I need to have Jacob's baby, you know, because this is going to make him fall in love with me even more. And so he went in her and got her pregnant and so they had children and then her maid leah had a maid and she said here sleep with my maid and give me more children so they had more children jacob slept with <laughs> based on what leah told him to do jacob slept with her maid and they had more children okay this is probably where we get surrogates from in this earthly realm, right? Okay, because it's all in the Bible, everything that we see in this world. But anyway, then Rachel is now barren and she's becoming envious and jealous that 
Leah's having all of these children with Jacob and she's like, but I want to have kids too, okay, by this person that loves me so much and I love him as well. And so she says, I'm going to give my maid because they both had maids, bourgeois, okay, they had maids, they had servants. So anyway, <laughs> she's like, Jacob, sleep with my maid. And basically, this is our child now. So they had a baby they had the baby eventually god opens up rachel's womb so now my girl is able to give birth to her own child so her husband goes into her gives her babies altogether jacob i lost count to be honest i really lost count because between the four different women he had two wives and then two maids he slept with and between the four different women he had about between seven to 12 kids, maybe seven to nine, but at least seven kids. Okay. At least. Um, and I was like, would this really be acceptable in today's <laughs> society? This is not, and this is probably why men mind sometimes be a little bit, you know, screwed up on monogamy because they like faithful to what? Okay. These men in the Bible was wilding out, but let me tell you why they were wilding out they did things due to a woman's influence the woman had some sort of power over him and the women were doing things and making decisions based on their emotions based on their feelings and so as soon as this lady that i was conversing with was telling me her story god brought me to the story of jacob and he's like read this scripture and when i read it it, it brought me back to the cycles of dysfunction that we were in starting even from uh abraham and sarah because that's where they got it from. Sarah was barren. I mean, excuse me, Sarah, uh, she wasn't barren, but God told her, I guess she was barren then, but God told her like, hey, you're gonna conceive, but she's like, I'm 90 years old. How am I going to have a baby, right? She didn't believe in what God promised her. And so she went ahead of God based on her emotions, her disbelief. And she said, here, sleep with my servant, um, Abraham, because I need to have a kid, right? We need to have this kid. I don't know what God is talking about. I don't know how this is going to come to pass. I don't know how this is going to happen. So she tried to take control into her own hands. And so they created Ishmael. But Ishmael wasn't the promised child Isaac was. So if they would have just waited, if they would have been obedient and obeyed the voice of the Lord and trusted God and not their emotions, they wouldn't have created Ishmael. Shout out to Ishmael. You're okay, baby. Okay. But I'm just saying, right? And so when you think about the story with abraham and sarah that's how abraham was influenced by sarah when you think about adam and eve from the beginning of time god adam had the power god gave him the ability to name all the things okay all the animals and um everything in the world basically and he had authority with god okay god gave him instructions all right but when eve <sighs> was deceived by the, the 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 enemy right based on emotions based on the woman's influence adam got off course he disobeyed god he got out of the will of the lord why because he followed what the woman said and the woman made a decision based on her what her emotions like oh let's eat this let's eat this and it's like what <laughs> and then so now we get to rachel and um Jacob, and what you need to understand, my loves, oh my goodness, the enemy is going to use your emotions during this time to get y'all out of position, to get y'all to forfeit the blessings, to get you to uh, forfeit the promise. And this is really a, a, a tactic of the enemy. And that's why you have to be so careful and you have to be on top of your game, okay? You have to... Um, vow to not honor your feelings none of these promises that god is going to be gifting to you is going to come to pass based on your feelings you cannot do nothing with your feelings everything has to be based on your flesh okay this is a um hmm how can i say this holy spirit basically when you step out of God's will, like say fornicating, and you know he called you to celibacy and you know he told you not to do that with anyone else, right? But you do it out of your feelings because you feel like I'm sad or I'm going to miss this person or I love this person and I just want to express my emotions to this person but in a sexual way. When you do that, these people, uh, what you're really battling is the demon or what you're really battling, battling is the giant that is in your way, okay? And so you don't want to play with the devil, you don't want to play with the devil. You want to stop the enemy in his tracks. You want to let the enemy know, 
know that he has no open access to you, that he cannot come to you with the same nonsense that he's been coming to you year after year after year. He's been using your emotions to come against you for so many years, okay, to make you make poor decisions for so many years. And it is time for you to defeat Goliath. It is time for you to defeat Baal. It is time for you to live above your emotions. Because what you do, when you honor your emotions, when you choose to honor your emotions, you're, you're going to inevitably, right? I know you don't mean to, but you inevitably move out of God's will for your life. And you create the Ishmael's of the world. And you influence the man to probably do the things that he, he know he shouldn't be doing. But you just have that so you have so much power. A woman has so much power and influence over men. I know I know that they would hate to admit that, but we do. We do. Because a man just wants to please you. A man just wants to see a smile on your face. A man just wants to make you happy. He learned that by how he learned how to please his mom, right? Or his grandma, whoever cared whatever whoever raised him. Okay, so they men grow up knowing how to uh some of them, not all, but most of them grow up knowing how to have a regard for a woman. But women especially with this whole feminism uh and woman empowerment and you know we on top of the world and we could do the job better than the man and all this other stuff that we got going on right now it's out of order it's out of order so we need to bring it back we need to bring it back where the man is the head of the household where the man is the leader where the man knows his power and authority and he's walking that out and he's not being influenced or bamboozled by the woman anymore and the woman is not making decisions based on han da la la bo her feelings because if you're going to be a helpmate to that man then you need to be sober-minded you need to make decisions with wisdom you need to seek wise counsel before you make any move pertaining to the kingdom of god do y'all understand family stop playing with these demons stop playing with these demons understand the influence that you have over your man that Jacob and Leah story and, and Rachel's story, if you really read that scripture, it's a whole bunch of stuff going on in there that, that makes absolutely no sense. And <laughs> God is done with the nonsense. He's done with it. He's like, baby, make it make sense. Okay? <laughs> so I'm here trying to make it make sense for you all. It makes no sense. It doesn't. So this is a, a call. This is a message. For women to understand their power and influence over a man and for men to step back into their power and authority, your divine position as the leader and head of your household, head of your family. And let's get it right. Let's get it right. Let's walk this thing out in faith, truly, and not be in our feelings. Okay? All right. I love you all. Bye now. Dr. G is out. Be blessed. Do not forget to be a blessing. I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm sad. I, I love to come on here, but I hate it when I have to go. But I have to go now. So bye. So long. Farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now. Until we meet again. <laughs> Later.